on World News Tonight. Trump booked. Following a shocking surrender by the former US President, Trump is back on his way following a hefty bond. Shoot for the moon. India releases footage of the biggest leap in space endeavors for the South Asian region. Join the club. BRICS announces the historic new admissions of six new members. And in solidarity, Paris's Eiffel Tower lights up in Ukraine's colors for the nation's Independence Day. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and you are joining us on World News. We begin as history was made with the former US President Donald Trump's surrender at a jail in Georgia in his fourth arrest. He's now released after taking a historic first ever mugshot for a former US President, making a return to X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. The former President posted the mugshot. Now Trump's Georgia mugshot has quickly become a campaign symbol. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has surrendered to law enforcement authorities for the fourth time this year. This time he surrendered to Fulton County Jail in Atlanta, Georgia on Thursday night, where he was charged over alleged attempts to overturn the 2020 election in the state. But his visit to Atlanta was notably different from the three past surrenders. Rather than a courthouse, Trump was required to visit the county jail, which has a history of violence and poor conditions. And unlike in other cities that did not require him to pose for a mugshot, a booking photo of him was taken, a first in history for a former U.S. president. The booking process was brisk, merely 20 minutes, and Trump was released on a $200,000 U.S. dollar bond, which had him quickly heading back to the airport for his return flight home to New Jersey. He insisted once again that he did nothing wrong and called the case accusing him of subverting election results a travesty of justice. In all, the former president was in Atlanta for roughly an hour and a half. In Fulton County, unlike in other jurisdictions, arraignments generally happen after a defendant surrenders at the jail and completes the booking process, not on the same day. That means Trump may have to make another trip to Georgia in the coming weeks. And unlike his previous arrests, his indictment in Atlanta was with 18 others, including his ex-chief of staff Mark Meadows and former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani. So far, a total of 12 defendants, including Trump, have surrendered, while Trump and 10 co-defendants are now out on bail. One of the co-defendants, Harrison Floyd, who heads Black Voices for Trump, remains in custody after failing to negotiate a bond agreement. The remaining seven co-defendants have until noon Eastern time on Friday to turn themselves in. With Chandrayaan 3's triumphant lunar landing, India's space endeavors have received a substantial boost. Here's what lies ahead for this remarkable mission that has made India the first country in the world to land near the moon's south pole. India's space agency has released new footage that shows Chandrayaan 3's rover for the first time ever. The video was taken just hours after the country made history by becoming the first to land near the South Pole. It shows Pragyan exiting the lander by sliding down a ramp and taking first steps on the lunar surface. The Vikram lander, carrying the rover in its belly, had successfully touched down as planned. With this, India joins an elite club of countries to achieve a soft landing on the moon after the US, the former Soviet Union and China. The Indian Space Research Organization said the 26-kilogram rover had ramped down from the lander and India took a walk on the moon. Pragyan, which moves at a speed of 1 cm per second, is now roaming around the rocks and craters, gathering crucial data and images to be sent back to Earth for analysis. With each step, it's also leaving on the moon's surface the imprint of ISRO's logo and emblem embossed on its six wheels. The rover is carrying two scientific instruments which will try to find out what minerals are present on the lunar surface and study the chemical composition of the soil. Pragyan will communicate only with the lander, which will send the information to the orbiter from Chandrayaan-2, which is still circling the moon, to pass it to the Earth for analysis. We are tracking severe weather on the move. 20 million people on alert from Midwest to the Northeast as multiple cities in the USA was hit with flash floods, including Las Vegas and Detroit, as severe weather sweeps across the US. From the Ohio River Valley to the famed Vegas Strip. Wreckage and rescues amid torrential flash floods. In a Las Vegas wash, authorities say multiple people were swept away. Two are still missing. Slots soaked after storms damaged the ceiling at Harrah's Casino. It started raining and raining and raining. 
Parts of southern Michigan clocking more than an inch of rain per hour overnight. In northern Ohio, storms knocked out power for tens of thousands. Drivers rescued. Part of a parking garage collapsed. Daylight in Detroit revealing cars swallowed. Telephone poles snapped. Roads impassable near Detroit's airport with passengers stranded after underground tunnels flooded. Thousands of flights delayed, hundreds canceled. On our way to the airport, we actually went only, we were only about a mile and a half away. Um, and all of a sudden the traffic got really bad. There was cars you could tell that had just like gone completely underwater. Fast moving storms wreaking havoc coast to coast tonight with millions still at risk. The BRICS group of big emerging economies has announced the admission of six new members in an attempt to reshape the global world order and provide a counterweight to the U.S. and its allies. From the beginning of the next year, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Argentina, the UAE and Ethiopia will join the current five members, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. It's the second time that the club of emerging economies is growing. Speaking in Johannesburg, President Cyril Ramaphosa, the current BRICS chair, announced a consensus on the latest expansion. Formed in 2009 by Brazil, Russia, India and China, South Africa joined a year later. The six new members, Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates, will officially join on the 1st of January 2024. The move is aimed at giving more clout to the bloc, which has pledged to champion the global south. Brazil's president said it confirms the group's growing relevance. The BRICS GDP has now risen to 35 percent of global GDP at purchasing power parity, and member countries account for 46 percent of the world population. The leader of the world's second biggest economy, China, said it shows the bloc's commitment to working with developing countries. These new members provide a new starting point for BRICS cooperation and inject new impetus into the BRICS cooperation mechanism. The incoming members hailed their inclusion as historic. The New Look BRICS is a motley mix of big and small economies and democratic and authoritarian states. And it underscores a conviction of strength in diversity in the face of a Western-dominated global system. Now, just 24 hours after Wagner Group leader Yevgeny Prigozhin's reported death in a plane crash, Russian President Vladimir Putin broke his silence on the chief while there are speculations from the U.S. that the plane crash could have been caused by a bomb. Russian President Vladimir Putin spoke on Wagner Group chief Yevgeny Prigozhin for the first time since the deadly plane accident that presumably killed the mercenary group's leader. On Thursday, Putin sent his condolences to the family of Prigozhin and recalled him being a man with a complicated fate. As for the aviation tragedy, first of all, I want to express my sincerest condolences to the family of all the victims. I knew Prigozhin for a very long time, since the early 1990s. He was a man with a complicated fate, and he made serious mistakes in life. Putin, however, praised Pogosin for being a talented businessman that not only worked in Russia, but also in Africa. Meanwhile, Washington has raised a number of possibilities on what caused the plane accident. While Pentagon spokesperson Pat Ryder said the U.S.'s initial assessment is that Pogosin was killed, there's no proof that a surface-to-surface -surface missile took down the plane, as some of the reports have indicated. However, U.S. intelligence officials who spoke on the condition of anonymity said the explosion could have been caused by a bomb or other device planted on the aircraft. The big question now is, what will the future hold for the Wagner Group? According to experts, the group's leadership structure is kept tightly under wraps, so it's unclear who will take over as the new leader, while some say it could be chosen by the Kremlin. They add that the Wagner Group could continue to play a major role in Putin's governance and will continue to hold its presence in Africa. However, others say that the recent incident could demoralize members of the mercenary group and lead to a massive exodus. Let's go for a short commercial break. You're watching World News.
Welcome back. Now, local fishermen in Japan continue to protest against this discharge of nuclear water, while China says it bans all seafood from Japan. Strong protests from Japanese fishermen continue following the release of contaminated water from the Fukushima nuclear power plant. The fishermen expressed their clear opposition to the release, stating that the Japanese government did not gain the fishing industry's understanding. The Prime Minister had promised to carry out the water release after gaining people's understanding of the issue, but he decided to release it without gaining their understanding, so it's rather difficult to understand. The backlash from neighboring countries is also ongoing. On the 24th, China completely stopped importing Japanese seafood, maintaining a firm stance against the IAEA safety report and Japan's claims. On the same day, Hong Kong, which relies on Japan for 90 percent of its seafood, also prohibited seafood imports from 10 prefectures, including Tokyo and Fukushima. I would buy and eat fewer Japanese products. I would also pay attention to which prefecture they're from. I trust the Japanese government to have done their due diligence. It was a very big deal when this happened originally, so I think that they would not want to skip any steps. But the U.S. is backing Japan's discharge plan. Kudo News reports that the U.S. ambassador to Japan, Ram Emanuel, will visit Fukushima Prefecture on August 31st to eat fish from the market to show trust in Japan's procedures and offer support. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken expressed satisfaction with Japan's release plan on the 15th, stating that it meets international standards following the IAEA's reports. to the road to the White House as Donald Trump dominated media's attention once again with his surrender to authorities in Georgia, while Vivek Ramaswamy, Nikki Haley and Mike Pence were trending online. Far from the spotlight while campaigning in eastern Iowa, Ron DeSantis ended up looking like one more competitor in the crowd. Once viewed as a near singular alternative to Trump, the Florida governor had been floundering for weeks. The Republican primary is quickly reverting to Trump versus everyone else. DeSantis did not hurt himself during the debate. Many viewers even thought he won the debate, but it wasn't overwhelming. IPSOS poll of debate indicated that Ramaswamy was in fact the winner. Of the candidates in the primary, DeSantis is still running second to Trump, but Ramaswamy is drawing near closer, and DeSantis is hardly clearing the field. Moreover, even the former President Donald Trump crowned tech entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy the winner of the Republican presidential debate for singing his praises. DeSantis did not avoid every arrow directed at him as Ramaswamy accused him of delivering memorized, pre-prepared slogans. And Halle mentioned DeSantis' time in the House when listing a slew of 2024 candidates she said were responsible for contributing to increasing the federal debt. Turkey's central bank hiked its key interest rate by a surprisingly large 7.5 percentage points to 25 percent. Turkey's central bank made a shock move Thursday. It hiked its key interest rate by 750 basis points to 25 percent. That was larger than expected and caused a rare lira rally which sent it to its strongest level since mid-July. It was a signal of the central bank's new aim to address inflation as part of a broader policy U-turn. The policy committee includes three members taking part for the first time. It said it would tighten as much as needed in a timely and gradual manner to cool inflation, which hit almost 48% last month. The move leaves the policy rate at its highest level since 2019. Analysts said the move was the clearest step yet towards more orthodox policies. It comes after years of unorthodoxy under President Tayyip Erdogan, and market watchers believe it should help rein in inflation expectations. The lira had touched new all-time lows almost daily in recent weeks, but it jumped more than 3% versus the dollar after Thursday's decision. Turkish bank stocks rallied nearly 10%. Economists had only expected a median hike of 250 basis points from a previous 17.5%. Some analysts had even predicted a more dovish move given the bank undershot expectations in the last two months. 
Now, the clock is ticking for anyone in the U.S. who used Facebook in the last 16 years to get a piece of a $725 million settlement by parent company Meta tied to privacy violations. Facebook's parent company Meta agreed to settle a class action lawsuit in December over allegations it made data available to third parties without users' consent. That includes Cambridge Analytica, a consulting firm linked to former President Trump's 2016 campaign, which obtained and shared the information of 87 million users during the 2016 election. Cambridge Analytica was taking this data and analyzing it uh, in terms of user profiles, user preferences, political affiliations, and really using it to profile and sell that data to various political organizations without the consent of any of the users. The revelation prompted global outrage an investigation by the U.S. Federal Trade Commission. Uh, yes, Senator, I think everyone should have control over how their information is used. And a marathon of hearings on Capitol Hill, where Facebook creator and CEO Mark Zuckerberg was grilled by lawmakers over how third-party partners could obtain data without users' knowledge. Your user agreement sucks. Zuckerberg eventually apologizing in a lengthy statement posted on Facebook, writing in part, quote, I've been working to understand exactly what happened and how to make sure this doesn't happen again. Meta did not admit wrongdoing as part of the settlement, but the company is paying up. If you were a Facebook user between May 24, 2007 and December 22, 2022, you are eligible to submit a claim, even if you no longer have a Facebook account. Just log on to FacebookUserPrivacySettlement.com and follow the instructions from there. If you've had multiple accounts over the years, you may only submit for one of them. The biggest slice of Meta settlement, over $180 million, will go to lawyers' fees. The eight plaintiffs in the case will get up to 15000 each. The rest will be divided up for the affected claimants. So don't expect a large payout. Companies need to know that when they violate privacy rights, even if you can't demonstrate specific harm to you, that there's going to be some need for them to compensate people. And don't expect it anytime soon. The final hearing to approve the settlement isn't until September, and there could be appeals. So you can expect that if you file tomorrow, it will be several months before you see any money. Welcome back. And for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Dennis Rader, or the BTK killer, has been suspected for the murder of two more killings in addition to the 10 other victims in 2005 in Kansas. Warner Brothers say that they will delay the big-budget Dune sequel from November to March because its stars cannot promote the movie due to the Hollywood actor's strike. According to winemakers, scorching temperatures have hurt vines in southern France so much that output is expected to decline. But the hot weather could produce a vintage of exceptional quality. North Korea's second attempt to place a spy satellite in orbit failed after the rocket boost experienced a problem with its third stage as reported by the state media as a reported by the state media as space authorities vowed to try again in October. Kiev residents examined a collection of captured and destroyed Russian military hardware as Ukraine celebrated its 32nd Independence Day. And that is all we have for you on World News Tonight. If you missed any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash other there in English. Now we are leaving you tonight in Paris as the Eiffel Tower lit in blue and yellow to commemorate Ukraine's Independence Day. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend.